name Niluka Karuna Ratna started to resonate among the walls of Royal College and all of us as sportsmen, it was difficult to ignore such talent when a royalist at the age of 16 becomes the youngest national badminton champion in Sri Lanka. Oh, I knew there was something special about this kid, uh, not only from a badminton perspective, but also from a character perspective. Uh, I was fortunate enough to go on one tour with him. Bli done his alma mater proud and his country proud. Representing Royal College to representing Sri Lanka at the Olympics. Through many challenges, your achievements displayed your dedication, hard work, discipline, and your love of badminton. And our badminton hero, Niluka Karwara, be to know his contribution to sports as a sportsman and also as a resource person in our NMOC. PWF selected talented player all over the world from badminton developing country. During his school career, he was a great sportsman and he was a badminton legend. And he took six years badminton colors and also a crown recipient of Royal College, which is the highest achievement of a sportsman at Royal College. And he's the only Royal College student or a past pupil to captain an Olympic contingent in 2000. 12. Austin Chaki theatre hit a badminton play doll. It in the Mampatanga Nakota Mata Arambakar Makali, Ma Timuagi, Nirukarna Ratna, Unagehona. Gumasar Hamatar and the Akmo Balaniano. It in the Luke Gidakshatavian, Uita Odin Dek, Ivagi, my Tata Gudak, Luvi Karna Ratna, Yasahin, Miavino, and Capona. I still remember the time you uh, turned pro uh, back when we were in school. I was very happy for you. You were really following your passion and inspired so many people in Sri Lanka, uh, not just badminton players, uh, players from all sports with your discipline and dedication. Been so many times, uh, I've been trying to watch your games, uh, texting friends to find out a link uh, to somehow stream your games. And uh, it's been such a great journey to follow you all these years. Um, I mean, I wish you nothing but the best and I'm really honored to call you a friend, um, a colleague and I hope to get on a badminton court with you one day and play some because uh, that's one thing I haven't done. I had the pleasure of touring with him to the Asian Games in Busan in 2002 but throughout his career he's remained humble and never lost the common touch. He's always been a friend throughout the, throughout the years and been a great person. So Niluka, congratulations on an amazing career and congratulations on your retirement and all the very best for the future. So let's reminisce back, Niloka. Let's take a step back and talk about the first experience about uh, badminton that you have as in a competition. In 1993, I can remember I took part in a preliminary tournament that selects players from Gold District, where I am coming from. My mother took me to the tournament. I have played two matches in a row and then my mother was very much attached to me. She loved me a lot. And the second most memorable moment in my life as a kid was in 1994. The same tournament that I took part to get qualified for the Junior Nationals to be held in Colombo at St. Thomas uh, at Ananda College Indoor Stadium. So can you believe Bancourt Hall was fully packed with people to watch nine-year-old kid and a 10-year-old kid competing at a zonal final. I can still can remember I was squeezing into the court and, and went onto the court and played the match. As I remember, I was brought up in an environment which is very competitive. Basically, I was brought up in a manner and I learned since I was a kid to face challenges under pressure. I, it was a very close match, but in the second set, at one point, I lost the grip of my racket and racket fell down from me and went quite about two meters away from me. But I didn't give up. I went on, I went to the racket and pick up the racket 
quickly as possible and then continue with the same rally and I won the rally. That was a very electrifying moment for me as a kid. Then I went on to win the match and I won the match. So everybody cheered for me who was gathered to watch the witness the match and it was full house. I wanted their wish because they were the only two people who were there for me at the beginning. The moment we stepped into the house and my mother said, you made your father proud. That was the moment I had and that was the time I realized this is what makes me happy and I'm going to make them proud again and again. So after moving on to his uh, national level badminton uh, achievements, he thinks to himself, should I go pro or should I stop here? Let's hear from him. Niluka, what made you think that you would suit in a pro badminton match? By the age of uh, 13, 14 and 15, I can remember that I used to win against the players about who are elder to me, who are like three or four years elder to me. Basically, by age of 15, I won my first national tournament and then went on winning the national championship for the very first time at the age of 16 as the youngest national champion in 2001. And I used to think a lot as a kid, even though I was a 16-year-old kid, I used to think, I used to plan, I used to talk to my father, who was a former coach, national player as well. Every time I go after practices, I used to go home and I talk to my youngest brother, Chamika, and I used to ask him, I can remember this very well. I used to go and ask him every day. And uh, when I was 16, he was only five years old, but he still knew what I have been going through and what he's going through at home. I used to ask him, am I going to win? He told me, yes, you are going to win. I think I have the capacity to go into the international arena. And also by that time, I had a very clear idea of the Sri Lankan badminton structure and also the recognition that we had as a sport, badminton players, because that time the cricket was the most recognized and the most popular sport in Sri Lanka and still it is. And But I wanted to put my sport because as a badminton player, I chose to become a badminton player by myself. That is what my passion is about. And I really wanted to do my uh, achieve something for my sport and also some to achieve the best I can I could achieve as a badminton player. So there are two things that went through my mind. If I am as the national champion at that time, it is my sole responsibility to bring and to achieve the recognition that Sri Lanka badminton never had locally and internationally. So which I did and I was very much motivated for an individual sport like badminton. I had that discipline in, within myself, which I carried throughout my career. And I wanted to put my sport as one of the most responsible person at that time to gain the recognition locally, which never had, and also gain the recognition, put the Sri Lanka badminton on the world map, which I did. On my father's birthday, I came at the age of 18. I came to my first international final in Wales, Wales International Series in 2003, November 6 on my father's birthday. I can remember I went to that tournament with my father and my father dropped me at a motel and went back to London. And then I stayed alone in that motel. From qualification rounds, I went to finals. I played the finals with Irwansha from Indonesia, who's the coach of Ginting now. And he played for Wales that time, but I lost the finals. And I, my father, I can remember, he came from London to Cardiff on a bus, National Express. And by the time he arrived, my match was over and I lost, but I was very happy that I came on his birthday. And i very happy that my first international final was achieved on his birthday. That I realized by myself. And I, because that realization came through on two factors, which I wanted to achieve, right? Doesn't matter what is the environment is, doesn't matter how negative is your environment is, but my passion and my goal, what I love, is I have to achieve something for my love and passion. That's what I did. In most parts of the games, you're not trained exactly for failure. So Niluka, if you can talk to us about those uh, specific challenges that you had to face. 2004, after I left the school, we had the former president, Jairaj Vijay Singh, a chairman of Bart Leeds, who was a uh, Vice President at Badminton World Federation. He recruited me 
to his company as a junior executive in finance and then to pursue continue my badminton career as a professional player so one day he asked my father and myself to come to his office because he had a lot of experience in terms of world badminton federation administration and he has been working with the top officials in the badminton world federation and he has seen a lot of top badminton for more than a decade as an official who served badminton federation so he asked me to come to his office with my father and asked told me he has seen he recognized my potential to go to the next level so he wanted to be very clear to ask my consent about what my plan is going to be a, a player who is not only to achieve something locally but internationally so the first question was asked from me and my father if are you ready to work three times harder than what you work right now at the moment in sri lanka i was not well aware of, of the capacity that he was talking about but in my mind my heart i was ready at any cost to become a better player to become an international player but at, as i said before i had an idea what it takes to be an international player top level player my father and mother took a very firm and very confident decision to send me right after school to malaysia that is where i practically saw to my own nice what it takes to be a top badminton player how much work that you have to put in to become a top level badminton player i was trained by my parents to face challenges under a lot of pressure i was put in into a system that i was never experienced before ever in my life i used to train 4 hours a day in sri lanka then the moment i went to a place to train 8 hours a day 10 days in a row and one day rest even sunday half day rest that is the work ethic they have been following in malaysia so when i put into a system like that so i was used to to be in that system for a long time and then the challenges may rise in sri lanka is absolutely does not get into me at all to be honest a lot of financial challenges few in sri lanka the environment we have in terms of infrastructure in terms of sponsorships in terms of understanding of the athlete's requirement to become a, a professional athlete in terms of traveling continuously throughout the year end of 3 months prior to the deadline of the qualification i was training too hard because i am a person who dedicate myself to badminton to my sport uh, a lot i was training too much which i couldn't take it to myself uh, physically and mentally both then i got sick in february 2008 then i came back to the sport then i failed in 2008 to get qualified for olympics which was my dream then in 2012 i made my dream come true with a lot of effort a lot of maturity and a lot of understanding of my training of myself my body and mind and the process as i said it was never a easy journey at all especially uh, coming from a country like sri lanka where we have less financial support and also i think the understanding of the international arena come true in 2012 which was my dream come true for the first time in 2012 as an olympian then i made it in 2016 and for the last time in 2020 tokyo as an athlete to take part at the olympics to be an olympian is ultimate goal where which made me complete as an athlete when i stepped into the olympic stadium that was the moment i felt myself that i am complete a feeling that you receive for yourself that your mission is accomplished personally for your country for your family and for your sport the moment i step into london olympic stadium bearing my national flag i knew that i was not only bearing a national flag but also my country and the moment i step into the stadium through those huge gate and i saw huge amount of people cheering and celebrating the olympics and it is 80000 people watching me bearing my national flag and walking around in the stadium and that moments 
I will cherish forever in my life and that is even though I made a huge upset in the first round at the Olympics in 2012 beating world number 8 holding the national flag and entering the London Olympic Stadium is the most memorable moment in my career. You have to be consistent over two decades career. What were the success factors that made you the person who you are today as an athlete? It's absolutely the never ending fire I had within myself. I think it is my spirit that I had towards my sport which made me completely satisfied because the more I love my sport, the sport start giving me back this happiness that I was searching for. I had the most competitive family. Of course, three of my brothers did the same sport and they excelled very well. And my first two younger brothers, Tiluka Karunaratna and Dinuka Karunaratna, who represented Sri Lanka more than a decade. And they were top 15 men's doubles at once, world ranking 42 in 2008. And they were national champion for many, many years. And they have been representing Sri Lanka along with me for many, many years. And of course, Charmika also played badminton. He was a national champion as well. And from since, since he was a kid, he has been winning all these groups. I had the background, I had this supporting fact who I can train with in my own family. So whenever I wanted to train alone, whenever I want to get isolated and train with specific training session, that I always had the opportunity to go with my brothers and train. And because that's why we, we have as a family, as Karunaratnas, that we have dominated for two decades, 20 years that we have dominated Sri Lanka badminton and 22 years is my career. And within those 20 years that we have, we are very proud, humbly proud, that as a family, as brothers, that we have given back our absolute best to the sport and also to our country very, very truthfully and with a lot of integrity. I have to ask from Niluka, what is your role for the future? I always wanted to make a change. I was not satisfied or settle the situation that we had as a country and as a badminton community, like we had in some of the university systems that ruggings and harassment was took place in Sri Lanka badminton at that time, when I entered to the national team as a junior 15 year old kid. So once I became a national champion, what I, the first thing I did was to say no to ragging because I was the most responsible person at that time when I became the national champion, I was the leading factor and then I said, I completely said no and stopped the ragging and the harassment which was took place more than two decades before me. I always say to my family, to my wife and to my daughter, whatever I say, even though she's very small, she can understand. I, I sometimes I become very emotional with her and I say, I walk with my head high, not only because I, what I have won for my country over two decades, but also the immense contribution that I have made since I was a kid, the conduct I had since I was a kid, from the age of 9, 10, 11 and 12, until the day I got reti retired from competitive badminton last year in Lausanne, Switzerland, 2023, October 1st. The conduct, the discipline I had, the commitment I put into the sport, bring not only to achieve for myself, but also bring my sport into the next level to gain respect, to gain recognition, as I said, locally and internationally. I am as the Athlete Commission Chairman at the National Olympic Committee of Sri Lanka. It is my sole responsibility to set up the infrastructure, support the system for the upcoming professional surrounding, for them to perform, for them to train, for them to take part in the international competitions in a better way. So that's why I have been working on set up my own foundation to work towards the development of the future athletes, future Olympians, and also all sports in general, set of professionals that I have gathered as a team and to work for the betterment of the athlete, the future athletes, which I have never had as an athlete at that period of time. As a son, as a brother, I have uh, done my absolute best and made my parents proud 
and I have made my brothers proud. And also it is my responsibility now to make my wife and my, my daughter proud. I was very fortunate that I have started my major games, which comes once in a four years to start in year 2002 at the age of 17. And I, my last games was in, in 2022. Birmingham Commonwealth Games that I managed to bring my wife and daughter into the competition and they witnessed me playing for the last time. That was one of the most memorable and one of the most happiest time because my daughter was cheering for me and I think she will remember that moment. Even though she's small, she will remember that moment for the rest of her life. As a person who loved the generation to move forward, as a person who loved to see athletes perform to their maximum ability, that I promise I will work very hard towards the future generations through my foundation, which will be launching pretty soon as Oli Niluka Karnaratna Foundation. Thank you.